what's up guys back at my hunt camp uh i am hunting deer but that's not what this video is going to be about uh we have call it an infestation we're overrun right now with raccoons man they're eating up all our corn piles and as you know if you hunt corn is not cheap uh they also and even more important than the corn they eat the raccoon eggs and i'm gonna be trapping some raccoons might eat one for you guys i don't know but bill from my last trapping video is going to come up and kind of hold my hand and, and show me how to set these dog proof traps for raccoons they're gonna ride along like i said the raccoons eat the turkey eggs and i love turkey hunting probably more than i like deer hunting and we got to thin them out we're not going to kill them all we just want to thin them out we're rigging them up here we got some cable because i cheaped out and didn't buy the ground anchors and uh putting them together this is eighth inch cable i got off amazon for cheap uh a dozen of these dog proof traps these are freedom dog proof traps from um What's the name of that place again? Minnesota Traps. Minnesota Traps. It was like 130 bucks shipped. And then you just put a big loop in the other end there and yeah, then just to pass one. it through like that and put it on a tree. There you go. That's it. Up. Raccoon's <laughs> worst nightmare. <laughs> What you got there? A little bit of fish oil? A little bit of fish oil and some corn. A little magic juice. Make a special bait there. Yeah. Irresistible to any raccoon. Coon candy. So, that's it. Find a good tree loop her around the tree put it through that big loop and then pull it down tight so what's the trick there hold it with your fingers like that mm -hmm. squeeze it shut get that trigger mechanism it's a little tricky i played with it at home I always give it about half kind of so it's not a little full. more of a hair trigger yeah then that thing just sticks down in the dirt like that mm -hmm. and they stick their hand down in that little hole right there and there's a trigger you can see the trigger you just fill it up so they got to stick their little hands down there and when they're in there pulling that corn out eventually they'll get that trigger and get their hand stuck Yeah, and there's a yeah, it looks swampy up here. There's a little culvert right here. I mean, usually this that that'd be standing water right there. Yeah, all right, we definitely start up right here. So we're gonna set one in this area because it's swampy and there's water. Raccoons like water. Uh, there's a little bit of a culvert here. It's dry right now out here, but uh, the track right here um but back in there is a cypress swamp tight to the tree this is the tricky part get it like that and then there's that little catch right there i don't know if you guys can see that catch face <laughs> <laughs> so 
I don't have it fully down in there, uh, but take that. Slip it on that side where it'll go. Oh, oh. Yeah. See, I did not know that. Should be two cones in the morning. All right, y'all. So we got some big old thick bone in pork chops from a hog that Bill raised and slaughtered. And uh, when I talked to him the other day, he was working on it. So he brought some for lunch. We were just out, finished, got all our traps out. It's gonna be a cold front tonight and I'm hoping that we got uh, a raccoon in every trap. But we're gonna season these bad boys up. Some Tonys, you can't go wrong with Tonys. Anywhere in the world you can buy this stuff and it tastes good. Oil in a pan heating up right here. I'm gonna fry up some Simply Potatoes. We got fried taters and some of those big old fat pork chops to be a lunch fit for two kings. I got the goofy hat on. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for this day, God. Thank you for the opportunity to be in the outdoors and just enjoy your creation. Thank you for this food. Uh, just ask you, blessed our bodies, and our bodies, your service. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Bring your stuff there, Mike. Big old thick pork chop and some fried taters. Don't get much better. Who is cold? I'm gonna run the trap line in the truck for sure today. I got my dad's old Remington Speedmaster 22 long rifle for taking care of the uh raccoons the way we need to take care of them we'll go ahead and get it loaded up now and uh it's about eight in the morning there's still frost on everything we're gonna head out and run this trap line i've got pretty high hopes um bill did say to me he said man you know sometimes it takes a day or two man i'm stoked I got first trap success. <clears throat> Very first trap we set, it's got a coon in it. And it looks like it might be a big old bow coon, as Bill would say. Big old bow coon. So the trap worked perfectly, did exactly what it's supposed to do um and we got our first coon that's my first coon ever ever trapping on my own i'm pretty stoked on it um we're gonna go ahead and take care of them and uh dispatch them humanely and quickly that's my first coon trapped my first trap he's got a nice pelt on him i think i might even skin this one We have a raccoon folks you can't see them in the the brush right there but let's go check them out oh man i was getting to be a little worried i started off real high with the first trap having a nice coon in it and uh then having three traps where they ate my bait and 
gotten away so i think i just need to set these traps with more of a hair trigger there he is hiding behind that tree all right guys coon number two for the morning uh, smaller one uh, he had both of his hands stuck in the trap so uh, feeling a little better here pretty coon not as big as the other one but uh I'll take it feeling pretty good about my first day of raccoon trapping and thinking about all the turkeys I'm saving Yeah, buddy. All right, we are on raccoon number three. We set this little creek yesterday and uh, Bill was very confident that it would produce. He was right down there in the in the little creek here uh, fun fact raccoons don't have salivary glands so they need to stay near water so that they can digest their food um, but let's have a look at this guy Number three. So I ended up with three for 12 traps. Out of the 12 traps, um, three hadn't been messed with, but there had been a raccoon that at least messed with every trap but three. And like I said, we got three. Um, this is a big sow coon. Is that the right yeah. terminology? Yeah, Heinz is excited. But bill was nice enough to come down he said i told him listen man i'm gonna eat one and he said he was worried about me messing it up so he come down he's gonna show me how to properly clean and skin one i don't know how much youtube's gonna let me put on here but uh we're gonna push it to the limit now what would you say like that was tube skinned or <clears throat> yeah case skin tube case skin, skin for tanning yeah so. That's how you would skin one for fur market because <clears throat> the best the best part of the hide that everybody wants is the belly that of the belly. guy. Yeah. That one's pretty pretty <clears throat> yeah, nice decent. Looking. I thought it was a uh boar when I first got it. But uh Crystal, you've been asking. There's a nail right there. See it? There you go, Crystal. I'm gonna cook a little camp brunch, y'all. I got some of this onion sausage from the Piggly Wiggly. It's a local sausage. I really like the way it tastes. Uh, had a busy day running the traps and resetting them, and I'm gonna go and try to shoot a doe this evening. And get this sausage cooked up, and I'm gonna make some pancakes. You already know of that shake and pour just so easy Mm. 
All right, guys, it's day two of checking my trap line. I'm gonna walk down on this little creek. It was good to me yesterday. Let's see if we got a raccoon. I have two traps set right down here. Oh, and we have a raccoon in this trap. You can't see the other one. There he is. Go ahead and take care of this guy. Pulling back up on this little creek right here, and I can already see I've got one in the trap. That's a nice big old coon. And a really, really nice pelt on it. Let's go check them out. Setting that water. And, uh, you know, they got me on this spot yesterday, but I reset with more of a hair trigger and it worked. Big old Bocoon. A good one right there. We up to two. That one's got a really pretty pelt on it. I'll probably skin that one out. I'm walking up to coon number three for day two. Pulling up on number four, having a pretty good day. I think having an extra day and then resetting all those triggers to a hair trigger was definitely um, kind of what changed from the first day. Big old coon. Look at that pretty orange pelt on that one. This was all tall grass too. Nice coon right there. I'm betting you didn't think you were gonna see me on the tugboat this video, but unfortunately I lost a bunch of footage. So everything from catching that last raccoon to cooking all the way through the cooking process, I lost because I bought a cheap SD card and there's a couple other videos that I ruined, but hopefully I can still salvage this one. It was really cool, um, it just is what it is. The only thing I got was a couple of clips off my phone that I had filmed for Instagram, and I actually was able to save the taste test because it was filmed on a separate GoPro. But basically what I did was I took the raccoon after build, cleaned it all up, he got all the glands and everything out, trimmed most of the fat off. I took K-Fred and brown sugar, 50-50, rubbed it down, put it on the Traeger for about three hours. I pulled it off and I cut it up and put it in an aluminum foil pan. And then I poured 50-50 barbecue sauce and water about three quarters of the way up the meat. I covered it tightly with aluminum foil and put it in the oven at 300 degrees for another two hours until it was all shreddy. And then you see the taste test with Crystal and Bianca when I pulled it out. Hopefully it didn't ruin this video for you. All right, so we have our barbecue raccoon. I mean, come on, if I didn't tell you what that is, that <laughs> looks kind of good, right? Like get, get a real good look at it. I mean, it looks good, yes. I mean, it. look at, look at it shredding right here. Zoom in, watch it shred. Like how, like, I mean, it pulls apart like a pot roast. The only thing I could compare it to like in texture is like almost like um, pulled pork, but it looks like pot roast, if that makes any sense. 
don't know. You don't think it's kind of like a... Can I just touch it? Yeah. Like a corn beefy kind of... I don't know. So. It smells really good. I was going to make a sandwich with it, but I've already eaten a piece, so. <laughs> Back to me. Look at me. I'm looking at you. Look at me. Look at you. So. Mullet says he wants to try some. Is this like, is there sauce on it? What'd you put? Yeah, I, well, you weren't here for the I whole video. Here. They already all know what I did with sorry, it. So don't ask questions so I don't have to say okay. it twice. Because you left me all weekend. I was alone. Very scary. I mean. He barely survived. <laughs> he only ate oatmeal cream pies. <laughs> and raccoon. And raccoon. <laughs> it's good. Give him a little piece. He wants to try it. It Give tastes it. like raccoon. I don't know what raccoon tastes like, so. We just. I do. Okay, so I want to try it. Okay. After it's been heated. Bianca. I, I tried a piece preheat and it was not my favorite flavor. Well, to anything be cold isn't gonna be that good. That's here, not true. I bring love it all the way cold up here. chicken wings. Okay. You want some pulled pork? Okay. I got the meat eater cookbook. You know Steve Rinella to eat raccoon. Tag him. It's not raccoon, it's pulled pork. It's possum. You already like possum. That's pretty good. What it definitely it? has a corned beef texture, if I yeah. had to say. Yeah. I know it's raccoon. You know it's a raccoon? Yes. Try it. What's, what do you like more, raccoon or possum? She's never had possum. This. It's good. Is it good? Like, be honest. You could, you could be honest. Like, would you eat it again? Because that's all we're going to eat for the next two days. Tastes like pulled pork, like regular pulled pork. It, has, it tastes like pulled pork, but it has a texture of corn beef. If I ate that and you, really, and you really told me it was pulled pork, it's good. I would have believed you, but I know it's right. <laughs> Let's get in here. I'm going to get a piece of the hind quarter right here. Get in there and get that juicy piece of hind quarter right here. Look at that meat. It looks so Sorry. good. It's really tender. And it's got a lot of fat in it. It's yeah. actually really good. It's very tender. I mean, I was going to do it in a sandwich, but... You don't even need to. I mean, you could. I'm going to say, this is the end of this video. Uh, I probably have eaten this before, I feel like, at a barbecue <laughs> place. And I, nobody has ever oh, told me. I don't think that's happened. But, oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, Raccoon, if, if you properly clean it and prepare it, the way Bill showed me how to get it all cleaned out, and don't eat a Borcoon, eat a sow, nice fat one you seen how much fat was on that thing and uh smoke it like i did and then slow cook it uh it ain't that bad mm -hmm. i mean i'm not gonna go out and start stocking up my freezer with them but no i think it's mostly a mental thing but before i ramble too long here that's gonna be it for this uh episode of tug trash and thank you guys i hope you made it this far it might be a long video um We'll see you on the next one.